So good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. Um, I do appreciate it. Summer nights, um, I know everyone probably has better things to be doing um, than listening to me. <clears throat> and I certainly don't blame those are off, that are off doing something else on um, a warm summer night like tonight. Um, not 101 here, but it was 98. So um, with really high humidity, so it's kind of a hot, hot country at the moment. Um, thunderstorms with hail. Oh, nice. Getting a little coolness, but those hard, those big icy rocks falling from the sky are not all that fun. Um, kind of rough on things. We really try to keep that out of here because it destroys crops. Um, kills animals and all kinds of things so we don't like to see big hail around this area even if it does cool things down so tonight what I wanted to do is I've been talking a little bit about this stuff in uh, right way options and you know um, as I do a lot of coaching and, and stuff with folks um, one of the things I'm finding um, once again is we're, we're tending to overcomplicate um, something that really shouldn't be quite that difficult. Um, I'm finding a lot of people, because of the volatility of the market, wanting to go faster and faster and faster in their trading. And that's okay if they have the temperament for it, if they have the rules to accommodate that. I had a really good day in my futures trading. Um, but that's not for everyone and if you find that those kind of things are stressing you out you may want to consider slowing down a little bit and that's what I want to talk about a bit tonight you know um, <clears throat> I find a lot of people that <clears throat> just benefit from slowing down just a little bit and one of the things I did in, in right way options this week <clears throat> I, ha I had some questions on on um, price action and I did something simple I just changed the candlestick chart to a area chart and I asked the questions when we look at price action in here could we actually do a lot better in our trading if we just looked for very simple things that are occurring in the market no matter what time frame you look at could we do a little bit better job of trading could we follow price action a little bit better if we kind of um, made it simple um, so much of the time when I'm finding people are struggling and struggling and struggling anybody anybody here just kind of feel like they're well, they're frustrated. Price action is volatile. There's no doubt about it. It's challenging to trade. And we want to just speed up and speed up and speed up. And we add in lots of different complications. We throw in a whole bunch of indicators. We throw in um, just all kinds of things um, that can run us into some trouble. And then we we struggle with losses over and over and over in our trading and I, and I know for me guys that um, when I finally realized that was it was me creating most of that problem because I was over complicating everything in my charts um, and, and believe me I'll show you here um, This was one of my charts I used years ago. Okay, I can tell you every single thing this chart is about, what it's for, what it's meant to do. Okay, I can tell you where the signals are in this chart. But, and it's because I put it together. But when when you look at this chart, you have to admit that I was, I was at this point in time, I was not trading price action, I was trading indicators. I had taken something that 
is actually relatively simple and complicated it to a point that I made it almost impossible to, I could have short-term success, but I made it almost impossible to um, have long-term success in the market because I could do, everybody gets a trade from once in, you know, once in a while, like the old saying, uh, you know, blind squirrel, every once in a while will we'll find an acorn. Um, but when you look at something like that, you can see that I've spent an awful lot of time complicating charts. I've spent an awful lot of time in um, doing things that made for some really pretty charts. But oftentimes only got in the way of me making money because, well, I was overanalyzing. You know, we had a conversation today in the room about, uh, particularly in options, we overanalyze our options. We try so often to read into the price action that somebody knows something we don't know and we, we assume that those somebodies know more than us and so we, we want to follow. And a really good point was made. Um, you know, we're let's say we're looking at open interest in um, an option chain, and we look in there and we see, oh my gosh, look right, you know, in in the September contracts, there's there's five thousand contracts here being traded on, you know, this seventy delta call. That they must know something. The truth is, guys, they don't. Because remember, if there was 5,000 call buyers, the only reason that occurred is because there was 5,000 call sellers. Somebody's on the other side of that trade. Okay? And we overcomplicate that because we look at open interest. We're, we're trying to analyze put call ratios and trying to make something out of it that may not be there. Um, we're trying to, um, we're trying to um, do something fancy with indicators thinking that no one has ever thought of that before. We're trying to figure out what comes next in the market when even the market doesn't know what comes next. We're trying to analyze candlestick charts in such a way as to give us some kind of an advantage that we can see something in the market that no one else can. And the fact of the matter is, if we would just slow down a little bit, if we would just think a little bit cl more clearly about what price action is, we would probably do a better job in our trading. And it doesn't really matter what time frame it is that you use, by slowing the process down, not overanalyzing, you can usually do a better job in your trading. So for example, if I take a diamonds chart and we use a five minute, whoops, not a monthly, if I use a five minute price action, I can easily see trend. Not that hard to see by the way this grade in area is after hours um, it's not that hard to see that we're in a downtrend it wasn't hard to see when the uptrend broke out of this consolidation to the upside okay if we look at a weekly chart okay it's not all that hard to see when the downtrend began it's not all that hard to see that the downtrend is testing the resistance. Trying to figure out whether or not we can push through. Okay. So what I want to submit to you, to everyone is let's try to focus a little bit more and, and not rush quite so much in our trading. If we can take a look at price action in a different way, and by the way, um, this is something years ago I created this chart and I do look at it if I look at this chart this is um, a daily 4 hour 30 minute 15 minute chart 
You notice in an area chart, you can easily see the patterns. Like right in here, everyone see the easy to see inverted head and shoulders pattern there? The inverted head and shoulders pattern that's right here. It's easy to see. We can see it very clearly here. We can see another one right in here. We can see, clearly see resistance and top levels in the price of the chart. And instead of just looking at the hard right edge in your trading, maybe if we spent just a little bit more time not trying to predict what happens next, but following the current price action of the chart without that prediction. I don't know if that's making any sense to you guys, but I know for me, when, when I quit trying to predict the market, my, my trading life changed. And it, it meant that I just became a follower or a student of price action. So when you're looking at these price charts, I want you to start talking to yourself, and this is gonna sound real funny and, and it might even be embarrassing if somebody else is home, but talking to yourself just a little bit, you should be able to verbally explain why this would be a trade to anybody. And it's an important process to do that because it's easy in a quiet room to tuck yourself into things you shouldn't be doing. How many of you guys have done that? Tucked yourself, anybody ever look at a chart long enough that you tucked yourself into it? You want it to be a trade so much, you hear somebody talk about it, you looked at it so many times, you tuck yourself into it and then wish you had enough. Yeah, other than today. So when we're looking at a price action chart, try to slow it down just a little bit. Ask yourself a few questions. Um, what's the trend? Are we trading with the trend or are we trying to trade against the trend? Okay. Pretty simple stuff. Ask yourself, where's resistance? Where's support? Okay, sorry for the chicken scratchings there, but you guys know what I'm talking about because we have a tendency of doing this. How many of you have been in that potential trade where you see that chart and the chart has produced some good candlesticks here moving up and you looked at the chart, you didn't quite get into it, but you wait so long to get into the trade, okay? This is called an area chart, see? Area chart. It's a line chart, but it just fills in. Helps you see patterns in the chart. But we get into this trade and we wait too long and then it over we kind of get overwhelmed by the fact that it just keeps going up. How many of you have been feeling that recently in the market? It's just going up, I gotta hurry up and buy something. And unfortunately, oftentimes when we do that, we fail to recognize where are we buying? We're buying at price resistance. And I'm not talking about just the diamonds. I'm talking about any stock. And it rallies so much, but we're just focused here on the hard right edge and we're in such a rush. I gotta hurry up and do something. And, and I'll tell you guys, this was one of my biggest mistakes. I repeated this problem. This happened to me over and over and over again. When I would buy something like that, it would almost immediately pull back and I'd stop myself out of the trade because the risk was so high to, to any kind of logical stop. We tend to do too much chasing and not enough analyzing of the actual price action. If I go back here when the diamonds was just readily trending to the upside, and we all, how many here want to How many people want to always buy the perfect entry? It's all of us, right? We all want the perfect entry. 
But if you look at a chart like this and you see the typical price patterns in the chart, and, and that is the peak and valley pattern, right? The peak and valley pattern, something we first learned in technical analysis, and the peak and valley can also have consolidations in it, but we're moving up and back in the chart. And what, we, what we'll notice from that is the perfect entries were always after the pullback finishes and proves. Those are always the best entries. Always. If we're following the trend, the trend begins after the first lower high. And after that, we want to be buying the pullbacks or the bounce off of that pullback. And you guys know what I'm always looking for is I'm looking for that candle pattern that shows up here. Okay, the pullbacks have to have some continuity continuity to them. It can't be great big whipsaws. I think that's what yeah what BN, B12 was saying. Whipsaws, they can't have great big price action risk for those entries into the trades. But at the same time, I want to make sure that I'm buying stocks at or near price supports. One of the rules I follow, I buy stocks at or near price support. Now the same thing is true here guys for the other side of the market. I want you to notice here in the chart that once we fail at a high, we want to start looking for the high points to short. Sell. If you're long something from down here, you take profits on it when it reaches those levels. Okay. So it's the same pattern when we're going down. We break down, we rally back, we want to look for the short. We rally back, we look for the short. We rally back, we look for the short. Okay. So when you're looking at these patterns in, in the charts, remember your, your very basics, your peak and valley. And by the way, guys, every peak and valley pattern, every trend reversal, whether it be up or down, every trend reversal begins for an upside move. We reverse the downtrend with the first high or low. Okay, that's where it begins. The first high or low. Now, that doesn't mean we can't rule out the possibility that resistance in the chart will stop that move. Notice right in here, the resistance in that chart broke right here, and then we proved it as support. That's what we're waiting for over here. Prove that you've got enough energy to break through, because until that occurs, we know that the downtrend has proven to us every time we've come up here, we have failed and gone back down. So we need to wait and see that that proof that we can pop through and hold. Here's the first high or low. Okay, but now we're at price resistance. My rule says I don't buy at price resistance, I short at price resistance, or I sell or take profits at price resistance. Okay. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is I'm finding a lot of folks that, well, even today ran into some problems because they were buying heavily over the last couple of days because the market was continuing to show this bullishness at price resistance and they felt like they were missing out. They chased into trades and consequently a lot of people lost some money today. Okay. Now, I don't know if this continues on up. I don't really care. And honestly, that is, that is the truest statement you're ever going to hear from me. I don't care. I, I don't care if the market goes up from here. I'm short on some trades and I'll lose some money on some trades in that circumstance. But I don't care. I mean, I don't like to lose money. Don't make, make no mistake here. But I'm trading what I know to be true, that resistance tends to be resistance until resistance breaks. Okay, support tends to be support until support breaks. 
okay? So what I do is I continue to follow those same rules. Now, every once in a while, you catch that reversal, lose a little bit of, bit of money on it. But more often than not, this year, what we have done the right way options is make a lot of money because we kept to the plan when we're downtrending, be looking short. I'm not saying this is a short market. I'm not trying to convince you of that. I'm just saying, are you following a set of rules and are you really looking at the chart with an honest um, look and not just looking at the hard right edge? Or are we running into that problem? I was going to use conundrum, but I, I look for a synonym of conundrum, and that was enigma. And so I was trying to be a little bit funny on that graphic, but which probably fell flat on its face. But the whole idea here is when we're following a set of rules, it really doesn't matter what we think or what we want it to be. See, you can have all the greatest intentions for a trade. It has to go up. I want it to go up. Boy, there's a whole bunch of talking heads that say it's going up. Okay? They've been saying that since over here. I was very unpopular for a little, little while um, because I kept telling people, be careful, we're ready to fall. No, no, no. Everybody says it's going to go up. Okay. I know when this changes, only when the price action proves it. Okay. So I want to ask you that question. If you've been losing money in the market, are you gambling or are you really trading the price action of the chart? Are you willing to see the price for what it is and not for what you want it to be? If we're so committed to catching the perfect entry in trades, why do we chase? If the trade has already moved up substantially, why are we chasing it? That's not going to be the perfect entry. The perfect entry is down here. Why are we rushing into risk? Why are we allowing the market to create that emotion to push us to do something we probably shouldn't do. Now, I'm not saying in a bullish market, there's not trades that are happening. When we're bullish in here, look for a chart that's producing a good signal. Okay, but don't chase the ones that are already stretched out. Okay, follow the trend, that's perfectly fine, but don't chase the ones that have already made their move. A simple rule that I follow, and I've shared this many times before um, with you guys, and by the way, for anyone who wants to know how to get this area chart, you can take any chart just on TC2000, you right click on the on the, um, the price action chart, click at it, and you can see I just selected area, and I can go right back to candles. Okay, it's easy to do. It's easy to take a look at a chart in a different way and get a different perspective on what price action is. What other people, what other talking heads and other things are telling you about the market, and this is including me, including Rick, including Malcolm, you should never ever make your decision based on what we said. You should make your decision based on what you see in the chart. Is Campbell right or is he wrong? Because I make mistakes. Is Malcolm jumping the gun on this trade? Or is this even my trade? Is the risk too high for me? See, what other people are saying, what talking heads are talking about, doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter at all. If you look at the chart and it doesn't compare, anybody ever heard a talking head, a Jim Cramer or something, tell you something about a trade. And you look at the chart and go, what in the world is that guy thinking about? How can that be a trade? There's, no, there's nothing in that pattern that says anything 
about it being bullish or bearish or whatever the description was on there. But we let those folks influence us. What someone else says can mess with our heads. When you look at a trade, what's your conviction on the position? See, I look at a trade like TLT and I'm holding TLT. I've got a bias on it. Big bearish engulfing candle on that today. But you know what? I don't care. Because I'm not trading that bearish engulfing candle, I'm trading the price pattern. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes we have to realize when we're compromised too. <laughs> right, Malcolm? We're compromised. We all we all get distracted. We all get compromised from time to time where we're not focusing like we should be, and that's where we usually lose a lot of money. Um, um, and I'm I'm not telling you that I'm perfect on this because I'm not by any stretch of the imagination. But what I am is very rules based. I want to see trend, I want to see positive price action, and it doesn't have to be instantaneous gratification for me. Meaning that I can take a trade and wait for a period of time on this for it to perform. That candle right there doesn't mean anything to me because it hasn't even broken a support level yet in the chart. I don't care. I'm not trading that candle, I'm trading the chart. So the other thing I was going to talk about here tonight is oftentimes we go to a candlestick class. And I know when I first learned candlestick trading, I thought, oh, my gosh, this is like the secret sauce. OK. This is my secret sauce. I mean, they just gave me they just gave me the ticket to riches in the market and I jumped into the market and guess what happened? I got my head handed to me. Because what they don't tell you when they tell you about a bearish engulfing candle is, where is it placed? See, there's a big difference in a bearish engulfing candle being placed at price resistance than there is a bearish engulfing candle above price support. Trend. Big difference. What are you trading? Are you trading the individual candle or are you trading the chart? Are you overanalyzing that price action? Are you micromanaging that position? Because there's not a soul in here can tell me, not one person, that can tell me what happens tomorrow in that chart. Not one person. Because I know this for a fact, I've done this a lot of times. Had that candle happen and the next day the chart looks like this. Now I don't know if that's going to be the case. It could be the other way. This could be down. And then I'm concerned. Breaks the trend. Okay, but until that breaks support or trend, I'm not worried about it. So you need, you need to slow down a little bit and decide what is it that I'm trading? Because we know with the volatility that we see in the market today, I don't know, China accidentally shoots down a plane and we're, we're now in another international incident. It's going to change everything in the market. And there's no amount of looking at a candlestick or looking at a trend that's going to confirm that that's going to happen or not. No one knows that. Okay, Same hand, instead of something bad, it could be something good. China comes out and says, you know what? <laughs> yeah, we were, just, we were just kidding about that whole Taiwan thing. We're not interested. And guess what happens? Everything changes. Okay, and we can't predict those things. 
So when it comes to micromanagement, I want to ask you guys, are you are you truly trading the individual candle or are you trading the pattern? Because the individual candles have a very specific meaning, but they have a specific meaning on the where they're placed within the pattern of the candle or the pattern of the chart. I mean, if you guys haven't watched that video that I did, oh, year or two ago or something on placement of candlestick patterns. I, I would encourage you to go watch that because where they're placed is as important as what that candlestick is. Yesterday was a nice bullish candle. Today is a bearish engulfing candle. Tomorrow could be a spinning top doji. I don't know and neither does anyone else. But when I trade a trade with a set of rules, I stick to those rules. Okay, So what that means is, is I'm sticking with this overall trend. I'm sticking with this pattern because I don't know what tomorrow brings. And I'm going to wait to see whether or not this trend fails or not. If a support level in a chart fails or not. If I'm trading short and I'm looking up here at this price resistance in the chart, and we moved up to this price resistance, I'm going to trade a short, my stop loss will be up here, and I will stick with that trade until that trade proves that I'm wrong. Then I close the trade. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so the question is, what are you trading? And I'm finding so much in this market because of the volatility, what we're what people are doing, the reason they're struggling so much is first off, they're not having the discipline to wait for the right trade. They're chasing, they're rushing, they're, oh my gosh, I'm missing out kind of attitude in the trade. And you guys know that, I don't know, for a month, maybe more, I've been talking about Etsy. Okay, break of the downtrend, hold the higher low. You know, been talking about this trade. Wherever you want to place this, don't care. Doesn't matter. What we do know is when we start that upside trend, we want to be watching those lows and we want to be trading off of those lows. But I also know this to be true is when the trade is up too many days, and I usually use the rule five to seven rules and five to seven days in one direction, there is no trade. If we've moved up multiple days and I haven't been in the trade yet, I can't trade the trade. I can't get long because I'm breaking my rules. My rule says I buy at or near price support and trend. Okay? At or near price support and trend. So I'm looking for an entry in here. Now I'm not saying this was a great entry, but that's where I'm looking for an entry. I'm looking for an entry here. I'm looking for an entry out here. And I'm patient to wait for that trade. What that means is sometimes I miss trades. And here's the other thing, I don't care. I don't think this is probably reset. Yeah, I don't has already reset. Um, I made over $6,300 in futures today. Okay. Do you think I really care when I missed this trade in the app? Because I told everybody, not this trade, I told everybody when I left for um, my lunch today that there was a short setting up here in the futures, and I didn't take it. Probably the best run of the day. I wasn't even watching, but I don't care. Either I'm in the trade or I've caught the trade or I haven't. What happened in the past doesn't matter. I don't care because here's what I know. If I watch and I wait, There'll be another trade coming along pretty soon. Yeah, or three or 10 or 100. That's the problem, right? More trades than we can possibly get to, but we, we agonize over the trade we missed. Don't do that.
this is a Dow Jones E-mini futures. Okay. It's it's um, YM. It's four slash YMU twenty two. Okay. It's the Dow E-mini futures. Now I choose when I day trade, I trade this. If I don't find something in the daily charts, because I believe we're at price resistance on all of the indexes, then I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait and see if the short plays out in here, but I'm sure not gonna be overly buying long when that's occurring. Okay, as long as the downtrend exists, I wanna be predominantly short. I want to be thinking short at price resistance. I don't want to be thinking long. Doesn't matter how many talking heads tell me the bottom's in, it's all over, everything's great. I don't care what does the chart say. The chart tells me this is where we have failed multiple times. So now prove to me that you can either break out or if you're going to fail, that I'm on the right side of the trade. Okay. If this turns around and goes up, I don't care that I missed that trade. It doesn't bother me. Because what happens when we normally break a downtrend, guys? We break a downtrend, we test it as support, and then we continue to follow the trend to the upside, and I'm still going to look for the low entry. The same price pattern that I always look for. And it's not because I'm great at what I do. It's not because of that I can see the future in the market. I just know that that pattern, every chart that you look at is going to have that pattern. Okay. <clears throat> um, futures trading has um, probably the biggest advantage, I think, Eric, is that um, it's a, there's a tax advantage in it. If you day trade options or day trade stocks, you've got to record all of your trades in your in your taxes. Um, you'll have to if you ever get audited, they're going to ask you to prove your entry and exit. What what symbol was it? When was your entry? When was your exit? Okay. With futures, it's I made this many trades, this is my PL, and you're done. You day trade stocks or you day trade um, option contracts. If you're in a qualified account and you do quick in and out trades, you're going to be labeled a pattern day trader. You'll have your trading shut down for periods of time because you're not allowed to do that in a qualified account. For some reason, the infinite wisdom of the government, they don't have those restrictions on day trading futures. Go figure. You can do whatever you want. They don't care. So when I day trade, that's why I trade futures. And I don't like the day trade that much. Okay. It's not what it's not why I signed up to be a trader. I can make a lot of money doing it. In fact, I'm I don't know, I'm probably 70,000 so far this year from futures profits because of the volatility of the market. But there's going to be there's going to be um a time when that volatility drops and it won't be very much fun to trade it at all. because it won't be big moves, there'll be a lot more chop in it when that volatility dies off. Okay, I, I don't wanna be a day trader. I became a trader, so I had the lifestyle of a trader. I day trade just for the expediency of when the market's not providing really good trades that I can still pull some money out of the market. Okay. 
So I don't teach futures trading. I don't even recommend it to most people because it can be extremely dangerous. Okay. But the same thing is true, guys. It's the same price patterns I trade on this chart that I trade on any other charts, just faster. There's the short, there's the three eight trap short, lower high failure. Now I can wait this whole period for that trade and actually what the big trade that I caught just to be fair was the failure I was sitting here working last night was the failure at the pivot right here 3 8 trap short that I caught with quite a few contracts that made most of that money Okay, same pattern, same trade, lower high failure at resistance. I do the exact same thing every time I trade. It's the exact same pattern. And I can wait. I don't care if I have to wait two weeks for that trade. It doesn't matter. It either is my trade or it's not my trade. So I want to ask you guys, are you following a set of rules? Do you know what kind of trader you are? Are you being consistent and applying those rules over and over and over? There's that trade again right there. The lower high failure. Guess what? It works. Here's the long trade. Over and over and over. I look for trades like that. Now this one, if you notice in here, might have been a little bit lower risk trade than this one would have been going along. So I might not even, I might have looked at it and went, yeah, not interested anyway. So what I'm asking you guys in, in this class tonight is to look a little bit deeper at the chart. Stop trying to predict the chart. Stop trying to take all of this input from talking heads and different things out there and making your decisions based on what other people say or making decisions wow there's a lot of people trading this option it's got to be good you don't know that in fact you don't even know what that trade is about you don't know if it's an institution hedging you don't know so base your trade on what you see in the chart. Are you following a set of rules? Are you looking at the chart for what it is or are you trying to trade the chart for what you want it to be? See, I get this all the time with folks. Yeah, but Doug, I, I mean, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. The safer trade will be up here, guys. If it breaks out and holds, that'll be the safer trade. Right here, we broke out. You can see that wasn't the safer trade. Right way options was short on that trade. Okay, because I follow a set of rules. So if you can simplify your trading a little bit and slow things down, I think you could probably feel a whole lot more comfortable and a whole lot more focused into what you're doing. I know a lot of folks, me included, for years and years and years, I was jittery as all get out because what I was trying to do is prove that I was smarter than the market, that I could predict what was going to happen next. And over and over, the market proved to me that I'm not that smart. So when I slowed down and just started looking at the chart and looking at the trends and say, okay, as long as this trend continues to the downtrend, uh, on the downtrend side, I'm not, uh, uh, and especially when we're up here pressing long-term resistance, you know, I'm not interested in buying long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of 16D nails. <laughs> <laughs> I 
box of framing nails come in 5,000, and I didn't figure I had a good day unless I'd used 5,000 nails in the day. Side story, but. So think about those things and think about how you can simplify your trading. Don't, you don't have to follow what I do, but how can you simplify your trading to make it more focused? Okay. How can you make it more focused and looking at the trend? Are you trading on the right side of the trend? Are you allowing the market to lead you into a trade or are you leading the market? See, I don't like the market telling me anything. I don't like the market telling me this is a trade. If I don't see it, it's not a trade for me. Okay, I want to make that decision. Decision. I want that responsibility. Okay, because I know what kind of a trader I am. I know what trade I want to trade. I want that responsibility. I don't want a chart. I don't want an indicator. I don't want a talking head. I don't want anybody telling me that's a trade except me. I want to accept that responsibility. It's one of the reasons I work so hard in right way options to try and teach the, the why of a trade. Not just a candle pattern, not just a, uh, not just a perfect crossover of some indicator. Why this is a trade? Where's the trend? Where's the support? Where's the resistance in the chart? Okay. And then the last part of that, yeah, discipline, 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 discipline. The last part of that is once you have chosen your trade, then stick with your plan. Because see, there's only a couple things that we can control in the market. We can control our entry. And we can control how much risk we take on a trade. Okay, but after that, it's up to the market. So my question is, when you're taking these trades, are you following a discipline that repeats in these patterns over and over and over, or are you just winging it? Because I would, I would guess that if you're just winging it, you're not having very good results overall. I maintain about a 70% win-loss ratio. So I want you to listen to this part of it. That means I lose about 30% of my trades. I know that from the beginning. But the reason that's okay with me is I know if I'm running a win-loss ratio that high, I'm going to make money over time as long as I follow a discipline. Okay? I don't win every trade, and I don't care. Because I know over time, if I follow my discipline, it makes money. And I've been doing it for years. And it's not about a specific candle. It's not about a specific moving average. It's not about anything. It's about being disciplined to a set of rules and a strategy and repeating the same thing over and over and over. I totally and 100% agree with what Malcolm just said there. Pick something, pick a strategy. Pick something that you're gonna do, a pattern that you see in the market and then work to exploit it. Become the very best at that pattern, at that strategy that you can be. Prove to yourself that if you repeat that pattern over and over and over and over and over, that it pays off more often than not. Because if you can find just one tiny thing in the market that you can exploit and it repeats itself over and over and over, you can make a lot of money. You don't have to be the jack of everything or jack of every trade. You don't have to know every indicator. You don't have to know. You don't have to be the smartest guy in the room because it doesn't matter. All we're going to do is find that pattern or strategy that we see all the time and we see readily and we repeat it over 
and over and over and over. And get ready. After a certain period of time, it almost becomes boring. Because I, I do the same things over and over and over every time. Been doing it for a long time. Same thing. Over and over and over. Okay? And the same patterns repeat themselves. Go back in history as long as you want, guys. Downtrends only break. They only end after the higher low is put in. This down here, this is the institution's job to make to decide that the bottom's in, not the retail trader's job. Institutions have 80% of the money in the market. They'll make that decision where they're going to start supporting a chart or a trend or something like that. Let them make that decision. Look for these higher lows. That's when the trend reverses. Same thing is true in the top. They will make the decision when that lower high comes in and we fail. It'll always be the institutions. It's our job after that to continue to follow the trend to the downside until that trend ends. Continue to follow the uptrend for as long as that trend goes until that trend ends. Okay. Find a pattern. Okay. Find a pattern, find a setup, and work to exploit it. Slow it down. Be more disciplined about your entries and how much risk you take on trades. You can trade less and make more. That's one of the things I really like. I mean, you know, that futures trade, you know, one trade, you know, and, and make a, 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 you know, bunch of money on it. I want to get that trade that I have high confidence in. If it fails, it fails. I stop out. No problem. It's the same rule every time. If it fails support, I'm out. If it fails trend, I'm out. No questions asked. I don't second guess it. I close the trade. But also the same thing is true. If I enter a trade and it pulls back, doesn't break support or trend, I stay with the trade. Okay, I follow my plan. Okay, yeah, and, and you know, Malcolm, um, uh, there's people out there that believe in the moon cycle, okay? And here's the thing, I would tell you, if you can take the moon cycle and trade based on the moon cycle, I know that sounds kind of crazy to a lot of folks, but a lot of people believe that, that the moon cycle dictates the way the market moves. Okay, if that's the truth, if you can find the way to exploit that, then do it. And repeat it every time it shows up. You make all the money you'll ever want to make in the market. But if we continue to hop around and not settle in on anything, if we try to try to be the best at every single thing, we try to read into the, the psychology of every single candle in the market, but we ignore support, resistance, and trend, well, then we're just asking for a beating. Okay. Find out what it is that you're good at, slow it down, and focus. Okay. Um, hey, Jeff, if that works for you, I don't even know what that means, but cool. <laughs> Seriously, I don't care. I mean, if it works for you, I would work to exploit it. If you believe that to be the case, then show yourself that that is true and you can exploit it and you can make money with it. That's all I've done with the 3-8 trap. There's nothing about the 3-8 trap that you can't do with two, two indicators. Um, 
you got everyone in right way options knows I look at a chart and say this is setting up for a 3 8 trap. I don't have to have the indicators there. That's right. Money doesn't care how you get it. But just make sure you can prove it to yourself with enough confidence that every time you see it, you can act on it. Okay? And then follow your rule. Slow it down. Okay? I don't know how often Jupiter gets in a good aspect. For me, I don't care. But that doesn't mean that you can't make it work. If you like Elliott Wave, fine. If you can prove that you can use Elliott Wave and exploit a price pattern over and over and over and consistently make money with it, then get her done. What are you waiting for? But there's another side to that equation, guys. If Jeff can't prove to himself that Jupiter in a good as aspect makes him money consistently, maybe he needs to question that thought process. If, if it's Elliott Wave and it's not proving to make you money consistently, it's time to start thinking about a change, don't you think? See, we can want something to be the case, all we want. We can want stochastics to always tell us when a great trade is there. We can want a MACD to tell us when a great trade is there, but how many times has it failed? Is it enough? Is it enough to give you confidence that what you're seeing in the chart is correct? If it is, do it over and over and over and exploit it. You found your place in the market where you can make a ton of money. But if you hold a belief that doesn't prove to be true, one of the biggest failures I see from traders in the market is an unwillingness to change. And that's no joke, guys. It's, it's actually heartbreaking. They've studied. They, ha they know lots of analysis. They know lots of things. But they won't get out of the way of their brain. They want this to be true, and by golly, they're going to stick with it until they fail. Until they lose their money, because I want it to be true. They're unwilling to change. So if you find that strategy that you like, but you can't prove it, if you can't show that it's working enough to grow your account, then you've got to make some decisions. You've got to fess up that something's not working and I have to change. Okay? Simplify your trading. Get out of this idea that somebody out there knows something about the market that you don't. Certainly, if you're just waking up in the morning and stumbling in and turning on your computer, you haven't looked at any charts or done any work, well, maybe somebody else does know something you don't know. Okay? Honestly, if that's how you're trading, you should be ashamed of yourself. Because nothing, you don't get rich easy. It takes a lot of work. Okay? Put some time and effort into it and find out what works. Okay. Slow it down and pick something. Be willing to change. Be willing to study and prove to yourself that whatever it is that you believe is right. I had, I had spent, I wasted 10 years of my trading life nearly 10 years of my trading life. Finding all the things that didn't work and trying to prove that I knew more about it than anyone else and that it had to be right, and it wasn't. I had to be willing to change, and unfortunately, pretty stubborn. It took me a long time before I finally figured that out and started turning things around. Nearly 10 years I suffered in what I call trading purgatory because I wasn't willing to change. I wanted to be a master of everything. Thought it was possible to predict the market. And I have proved over 
and over and over. I can't do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ten boxes of nails. That's right. Okay. Is that the link, J. Clark, for the... Awesome. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you posting that. So, guys, I hope that was helpful for you today. Um, I don't want it to sound preachy. I tried to keep this really low key because um, I'm seeing so many people suffer right now. So much anxiety out there in the market trying to be something you're not, I guess. Um, and you're suffering. You're suffering from that push, that pressure, that I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to compare this with that. This, you know, Jupiter's got to be doing the backflip over the 50-day moving average. I don't, you know, whatever it is. We all do those things at traders from time to time. We overcomplicate. Well, this guy said this. You guys ever notice that you can watch a news report in the morning and this guy says, you know, XYZ stock, man, oh man, this is the greatest thing out there. You got to buy XYZ. And then you watch, you happen to catch it in the afternoon. Man, XYZ is a piece of junk. You shouldn't be even looking at that thing. It's a <laughs> just kind of keep in mind, guys, those talking heads, they're preaching their position. They're talking their position. They're not there to help you. They're talking their position. <laughs> hey, if it works for you, Malcolm, you know, get her done. Load up your desk with crystal. I don't really don't. If, if you know, there, I, I know this to guys that there's a gazillion different ways to make money in the market. Find yours. And try to slow down and focus in on the chart. Am I really trading this correctly? Or am I trying to prove that I know something that the market doesn't know? And I think when you get that attitude, remember that, guys, for every buyer, there's a seller. For every seller, there's a buyer. No matter what trade you're in, there's somebody betting against you the second you enter the trade. Every trade. So don't get into this idea that you can outsmart somebody because someone's already trying to outsmart you every time you pull the trigger on a trade. Okay? Follow the price action of the chart. You'll find it gets a lot easier. Yeah, BlackRock. BlackRock is working against all of us. In fact, every, every one of the major institutions is working against all of us. They want our money. And trust me, they're disciplined. They're playing the long game. They're disciplined. Okay. We have to compete. So how are you going to compete? Think about those things and maybe come back to the market with a fresh set of eyes about how you can approach the market with a little bit more calmness a little bit more thoughtfulness and look at those charts a little bit differently and then look for your edge so that you can exploit it over and over and over. Guys, I want to wish you all a fantastic evening. Thanks for being here. Hope you didn't, hope you got something. Wish you all the best. Hey, you guys are welcome. Take care. Be safe. We'll see you right back here bright and early in the morning.